Let's get started. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kirk. Uh, I'm actually a graduate of here at Algonquin College. Uh, so everyone who's doing exams right now, I feel your pain. And I think Eric said he'd give you some bonus marks. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll try, guys. Uh, so like I said, my name's Kirk, and I'm a BIM manager at NOR Limited. Uh, today I'm going to discuss some of the ways that we at NOR are implementing BIM into our workflow to improve how effective our designers can be. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of the ways we're doing that now, some of the ways we're exploring, and uh, what, what can be coming up in the future. Uh, so NOR is a Canadian uh, integrated uh, architectural and engineering firm. We have offices all over the world. And we're lucky enough to have our multiple disciplines work on many projects together, uh, such as the recently completed Sir John A. Macdonald building, uh, which, is, uh, which is serving as the Canadian Parliament's uh, ceremonial space. Uh, and as well as the multi-phase Carlin campus project, which when it's completed, it'll uh, house 8,500 uh, national defense and other public service employees. So in Ottawa, we have architects, uh, interior designers, mechanical engineers, and electrical engineers. Uh, so it's, it's really nice to be able to work together uh, in one office. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, so both of the projects that I just mentioned, uh, they're multi multidisciplinary and it was really nice to have a, uh, be able to work in the same office. And since we're all in the same office, we can work out project or problems as they come up immediately. Uh, we can just walk over to each other's desk, find a solution and move on. Uh, and we're finding that BIM is really helping uh, enhance these benefits. Uh, so for one, since all of our disciplines are integrated into one office, uh, all our models are in one server location. So this, this uh, eliminates having to prepare your model, send it off to a consultant, they put it, uh, load it into their model, send you theirs, and this leaves a lot of room for human error. Uh, you could miss a step or uh, delete something by accident when you're purging your file. So keeping everything in the same spot really helps minimize these errors. Uh, of course, there are some challenges that this causes. Uh, having your model constantly plugged into others means that they may think you're done working on a certain area, but you're not. Uh, like, just because you sync your Revit model, you're not done working necessarily. Uh, so to help, to help with this workflow, uh, we have a, a BIM technical committee. Uh, so this committee comprises of members from multiple offices in multiple countries. And it's further diversified by the project types that each office does. Uh, so in Canada alone, we do residential towers, we do government facilities, uh, and we do transportation projects. So this broad perspective offers strength on establishing standards and best practices. And it means the approach we take will benefit all of our disciplines, not just the architects, not just the engineers. Um, and one advantage of being on this committee is the opportunity to help uh, improve the workflow of others. Uh, and an example is when you're creating a schedule. Helping someone create a schedule in Revit gives profound insight about how they work. And this is where true workflow breakthroughs can really be discovered. Uh, understanding what information is important to clients and to designers helps, uh, helps inform how your models and your Revit family should be created. Designers should be able to easily extract information out of a model when they need it. Uh, essentially, the model should aid the ability of the designers. It should not hinder their capabilities. And one of my goals as a BIM manager is to improve the abilities of the design team. I want to build tools into our workflow that makes everyone a better designer. Uh, and to do this, I ask a lot of questions. And I apologize to my colleagues for being so annoying sometimes, but it's part of my job, so I'm sorry. Um, so for example, how can we automate simple yet time-consuming tasks so we can focus on other areas? Uh, how can we illustrate whether a design option is compliant with our design parameters? And answering these questions involves close collaboration and a true understanding of requirements and also more questions. Uh, what information do you need? Why do you need this specific information? What are the connections between the information and what is the purpose of what you're trying to achieve? 
And how can we set up an intelligence system that will represent all the numerous parameters and, and multiple schedules consistently? Uh, so all these questions, as annoying as they are, they lead to uh, answering a, a more important and grand question, how can we be more effective? So a good example of this approach is uh, how, uh, the approach we took to representing all the nuances of uh, the Canadian government's Workplace 2.0 standards. Uh, workplace 2.0 is a government-wide strategy to modernize how the public service works. So there are several design guidelines to follow and specific ways that, uh, for example, rooms and workstations are counted. And the challenge was to represent this information accurately and effectively within the Revit environment. So, yeah, where do we start? Um, planning, planning how rooms should be built and what parameters will be needed to schedule accurately is a huge challenge. A lot of planning and thought went into the setup as well as a lot of trial and error. We knew we wouldn't get it right the first time, but we still tried, uh, we, kept, we kept at it and just broke through and <laughs> it was a lot of work. Uh, and if we couldn't think of the best way to move forward, we try every option we could think of see which ones broke and which one worked the best. Uh, and this was actually a very effective method. And in the startup world, they call this failing fast. So it's not unique to us, uh, but it, it was very effective in trying to find the best approach we could. So overall, this was a massive undertaking. Uh, several parameters were created. A lot of them were eventually abandoned uh, because we found that they were redundant. And we wanted to make this as simple as possible because we wanted our designers to be more effective and have an easy to use system. Uh, so in the end, we did come up with a system of parameters and schedules uh, that could represent what we needed accurately. And yes, it was a huge undertaking. Uh, it was not easy and it did take a while to get right, but this is where we start saving time. Uh, so now we don't have to count things manually and then type numbers into a spreadsheet anymore. We have everything set up. Uh, so once that information's there, it's recalled automatically. Uh, uh, yeah, so all of the Workplace 2.0 requirements were in our room data sheets from our schematic design phase. Uh, so all of this information is already in a format that we should be able to use easily. Uh, so what we did is we used uh, ID8's BIM link, which is software that uh, enables the transfer of data from Revit uh, into Excel and vice versa. And so we were able to, di to directly transfer information from our room data sheets in Excel right into our Revit model. So all the room names, the programmed area, and other Workplace 2.0 requirements instantly populated our rooms. So now our designers just have to place the rooms in the Revit model in the right place, and the schedules will fill themselves. So this is what I was talking about by making our designers more effective. Hours would have been spent manually populating all the rooms and parameters that make the system work. But by spending the time up front determining what information is required and how it is required, we were able to automate a task that would have taken up valuable time. So far, we've allowed our designers to focus on other issues, but how can we help them be more effective at finding those issues? Uh, one way we can do this is by creating a non-compliance discovery system. So I'm going to give a, a pretty simple example of this, but it illustrates well uh, how effective these can be. And you can apply this methodology to other parameters as well, but I'll stick with rooms and talk about area compliance. And by this, I mean, does the size of the room I created match what, what is required by the client? Uh, in the early stages of, desi of design, when you start creating a, a room in a Revit model, this, is re this isn't a big issue. Uh, you know the room you're drawing, you know what size it, it should be, so that's how you make it. But when more and more rooms are put in and you need to adjust for corridor widths or fit more program into your floor plate, uh, it becomes very difficult to remember which rooms are, are compliant and which ones need to go back and be fixed. Uh, it's basically impossible. And even if you carefully go back and check every single room, you're still going to miss a few. Uh, but luckily, we can use a system that we've already created to help find a solution. Uh, since the programmed area was indicated in our Workplace 2.0 uh, requirements and uh, it was in our room data sheets, we've already brought that information into Revit. And since Revit knows what size of the room is that you made, it's very easy to compare the two. 
So what we did is we made a schedule to compare the two and to make it even easier to see where the differences are, uh, we created a calculated value and added a filter to highlight the rooms that were outside of a set tolerance. Um, so here you can see the, the blocks in red are not compliant. Uh, and this, this is in your face, there's something that needs to be fixed. Uh, there's no time going through the whole model looking for the one or two rooms that aren't right. It's right there in your face. Uh, uh, and you know, what, you know what you need to fix. Um, I like this example because it shows that there's so much more to BIM than just a 3D model. The data is there, you just need to ask for it. But it's not quite as simple as that. You can't really just Google search your Revit model. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but what you can do is, is drive the problem down to the basics. What are the core requirements at the heart of the problem? And this is what we did with our Workplace 2.0 challenge. We took a broad problem, how can we re properly represent Workplace 2.0, and broke it down to a language we could translate into Revit. We ripped it apart into a set of parameters that we determined were re required to ensure consistency and therefore answer our question. Then all we had to do was report the data. But by doing this, we found even more ways to improve our efficiency. So you just need to keep an open mind and look for the opportunities. So there are plenty of challenges like this in the design world, and BIM is a great tool to help answer them. There are no perfect or final answers, and there's always a better way to do something. And even if you have thought of the best way to do it, new technology will come along and outperform. And that is the beauty and the excitement of the industry we're in. Improvement must always be pursued. If something has always been done that way, it's obsolete. Uh, especially now with so much new technology emerging every day, we can continually improve how we work. And here's another reason I like our BIM technical committee so much. It's a forum where ideas can be proposed, refined, and uh, implemented on a company-wide scale. Every member challenges convention and always looks for the better way to do things. And this thinking is built into our culture, and I think it has been tremendously positive. Uh, being able to express your ideas to your coworkers not only creates a healthy environment, but it makes you stay competitive in an industry that is always changing. And that is what really leads to innovation. Always looking for ways to work smarter and better, and by sharing ideas with your team. Learning how others work broadens your perspective and challenges how you think something should be done. If you have an idea, I want to hear it. I want your experience to help influence the path forward. The more collective knowledge, the more informed the decision. And that is how our BIM technical committee operates and has led to success in improving the workflow of our design teams. Uh, so there's a couple other areas of improving our design cap capabilities uh, I'd like to talk about. Uh, the first one has been mentioned in almost every single presentation so far, uh, laser scanning. Uh, but for us as designers, specifically using point cloud data from an as-built environment to improve the accuracy, uh, in this case for our mechanical fit-up design. Uh, so currently we're working with Ellis Don at the Carlin Campus Project uh, to implement this workflow. And the main goal for us is using this technology to have an accurate starting point for our mechanical engineers. Uh, so how it works, basically Alistair goes in, scans the mechanical rooms and other points of interest we have, and then they consolidate their data and, uh, and give us a deliverable. So we get the point cloud data, which we link into our Revit models, and then we use that to start building uh, the existing conditions. This way we know the exact location of all the systems and it greatly reduces our time in the field that would, it would take to survey. Uh, they also give us this scene web share file. Uh, this is basically Google Street View for a building. Uh, you can navigate through uh, all these little targets. You can see you can just double click and it brings you right there. Uh, it's a photo and like this is, this is hugely helpful. Uh, we basically don't have to go back to the field. You can measure in this as well. Um, so. So having uh, the combination of the point cloud as workable data and an interactive visual archive has been hugely beneficial. 
Uh, so we have information we can integrate into Revit to start building from, but we now also have the capability to virtually visit the site anytime we want. And while we're not necessarily new to using point cloud uh, data, it's been, been great to have Ellis Don uh, on our side to help improve uh, our workflow and bounce ideas off. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so it's been a really collaborative effort, and we're learning a lot from each other in the process. Uh, the second area of improved design is iterative energy modeling. And I don't mean submitting your building at the end of a project to run an analysis and see how well you did. I mean integrating energy modeling into your workflow from day one. Architecturally, we can use this data to study how uh, the position of our building will affect performance. And we can see how adding shading elements or changing the glazing type will impact the effic efficiency of our design. We can study these changes as our building matures and enact as many positive influences as possible. Additionally, our mechanical engineers can study the benefits of using different systems and can continue to optimize their approach. And as an integrated design firm, we are nicely positioned to take advantage of this. Our architects can work with our engineers from the beginning, sharing the goal of sustainability. And as we do more projects like this, and as we learn how the changes we make affect the other discipline, it can be turned into an art. So I've talked a lot tonight about how BIM can improve our design process, but there's more to BIM, or sorry, there's more to our industry than just design. There's also the business aspect. But really, the same approach can be, uh, to design challenges can be applied to business as well. And for business, my big broad question is this. How can we use BIM to improve the way we run our business? Obviously, there's not an easy direct answer to this, but it is worth exploring. And since we design all uh, our buildings nearly entirely in BIM now, there's plenty of useful information that we can extract. Uh, so for example, can we check the health of a project using BIM? Can we forecast resourcing based on the data we extract from similar projects? And again, I'm asking more questions, but these are the sort of things that keep me up at night. And they're the type of questions we're trying to find answers to. We just have to continue breaking the problem down into a language that BIM can understand. We, like every other industry out there, are becoming a data business. And the winners will be the ones that can manage their information effectively and leverage it to gain an advantage. And not to sound dire, but it's true. This will, however, lead to better design. If managed properly, all the data we create during a project can be used to inform our decisions in the future. We can objectively optimize spaces to be as effective as possible by analyzing how they were used. And by monitoring past projects' performances, we can enhance our business operations to become a more valuable company. All we have to do is keep asking questions, the answers, and the data. Thank you.